Is your relationship just completely stale? Maybe you're a little too comfortable and you just want more passion and excitement back, just like you had on day one when you met your <laughs> partner, right? So how can you turn it all around and how can you do it rather quickly? My name is Joe Moffitt. I'm Christina Moffitt. AKA T Moffitt with Master Life by Design. And today our video is about how to improve the quality of your relationship in four easy steps. <laughs> So the first one is you have to master meaning. What does mastering meaning mean? Well, what it means is, and that's a lot of means, what it actually means is every time a situation happens in your life or in your relationship, we give it a meaning internally in our head up here, right? We give it a meaning. And after doing this for about a decade and doing well over 17,000 coaching calls and observing my own mind, <laughs> we usually give more of a disempowering meaning to situations than an empowering meaning. For example, when I wake up, I get up early to go to the gym and I come home and I get a shower and all of a sudden there's a towel on the floor from giving our son a bath. <laughs> And this is at like 5.30 in the morning. She left it the night before. And I can sit there and be like, God, is she? she's so lazy. She can't even pick up the towel, right? Or I could give it a meaning of, wow, she was probably so busy bathing our son, taking care of him, getting him ready for bed, that she completely missed that. Mm -hmm. And what an incredible mom she is in doing so much for our family, right? Like the meaning you give it is is it, there, it's endless, right? Like you can give it, there's infinite meanings that you can give to a certain situation. There's a really good book and I'll post a link below. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. And Viktor Frankl, who's in the Holocaust, he watched his family die there. And he went through the Holocaust giving an empowering meaning through all of his time there. And you might sit there and say, how could you do that? It's literally one of the worst times in history, yeah. in the entire world. And this man was giving it an empowering meaning. Please put this in your notes if you're taking notes. You want to give yourself an empowering meaning and you're in control of what meaning you decide. So something that relates to meaning is all around intention and always thinking from the perspective that your your partner, your lover has a positive intention for what they're doing. So it kind of goes back to what he said, but you always, even if for some reason we get into a speed bump and he might be, um, let's just say a little intense with his voice or kind of passionate, right? Or kind of snappy, like just come on, tell me, tell me, tell me, get it done. If I'm like, oh, he's being an asshole or whatever, I'm going to feel bad about him. I'm going to feel bad about the dynamic of our relationship. Like it's just not going to feel good versus if I'm like, you know what? He might be having an off day. I know he means well. Again, you kind of want to give your partner the benefit of the doubt um, when it comes to thinking about intention and always having a positive intention. Yeah, it's so true. And here's one thing I want you guys to really understand with this first one is that you're not going to be perfect. You're not a machine. So if you expect perfection at some level, you're wrong. I don't, I'm not perfect in my meaning for sure. I'm not, she's way better than me, but she's not perfect, practice. right? But it does take practice. And the more and more you focus on giving it a more empowering meaning, a positive meaning than a disempowering or negative meaning, the higher the quality of your relationships going to improve yeah. and it's going to be quick. And you can do that starting right now. Yeah. You don't have to wait. So when you, when you turn off this video and your partner is just laying on the couch, you can sit there and be like, oh, instead of he's a lazy, you know, piece of, <laughs> you know what, you can sit there and be like, wow, he worked his butt off all day today and he's recharging so he can go out there and do it again for our family tomorrow. Yeah. Right? This will bring back the passion for sure. Yeah. The second thing is you want to make sure you make your partner feel like they're first in the relationship. See, today there's so many things in our lives, you know, with the internet, Facebook, um, you know, work, friends, just nature, kids, kids right? Like yeah. there's so much nowadays <laughs> that's grabbing for our attention all the time. And your partner, they want to feel first. And it's important that you put them first. One of the things we do in our relationship, we talked about this before we even had kids, was we're putting our relationship 
first before the kids, right? And it's not that we don't <laughs> love our kids and it's not that, you know, they're, they're secondary to us, but we want to make sure that they know that mommy and daddy come first because we want them to see the example yeah. of a healthy relationship because one day those kids are going to leave the house probably at 18 <laughs> and there's just going to be me and her. And if yeah. you put your kids first or you put other things first, you're going to look at your partner at that time and be like, who are you? Yeah. Right. And we want our kids to be able to put their relationship with their partner first too. Right. And so kids just one example, but you got to make your partner feel first. So maybe there you came home from a long day's work and you want nothing more than take a nice warm shower and kind of get, re you know, dressed and into your PJs or whatever it is. And you just want to watch your favorite show. Yeah. Well, what can you do? Instead, you can get your shower, but maybe you take some time with your girl or your man, depending on the situation, <laughs> and you go ahead and you spend, you know, the first half hour with them and you, you connect with them. Or even just coming home and giving your partner a kiss before the kids. That's just another really small way. It's like you're acknowledging your, your, your lover first. Yeah. And look, again, just like the first one, you're not going to be perfect at this. There's times where, you know, I kiss Christina first or I give her a hug first or grab her butt first, you know. <laughs> and Or there's times where, you know, my son runs up to me and we give him a hug and a kiss yeah. right there. And, you know, but most of the time I'm intentional. She's intentional about putting us first. Yeah. When you do that, watch what happens to your partner. Because let's be honest, no one wants to be second or third or fourth. Right? No one wants that. We all want to feel significant. We all want to feel important, especially to our lover, our partner. Yeah. So don't put them on the back burner. Make them on the pedestal. Yeah. And well, you're not going to idolize them like on the pedestal, <laughs> but you want to make them feel like they're on the pedestal, right? I always say he does such a great job because we have so many things going on. We're growing businesses and raising a family and all the things and we take care of our health. And I'm like, of all the things he has going on, I always feel like a priority to him. And what that looks like is he'll randomly just check in like, hey babe, how's your day going today? Or send me a message like, I just want you to know that I love you so much. Or he'll clean up if I'm working or coaching so that when I come downstairs, the house looks great. And so he really is attuned to how I'm feeling and checking in with me to make sure that I'm feeling good and vice versa. Yeah, she does a great job too. Yeah. So if you want to take the quality of your relationship to the next level, you want to put your partner first. Yeah. All right, so the third one is you must not violate your partner's must nots, yeah. right? <laughs> and so what is a must not? We all have must nots in the relationship. We might not speak them, and some couples do, like we do, we speak about ours, but not every relationship speaks about your must nots. Mm -hmm. So what are they? Those are the things that on a consistent basis are not being violated. So for example, go ahead. So if one of my must nots is a partner who plays video games all the time, all day, every day. And there are those of you out there who do. <laughs> so that's a must not for me. So if he were to be sitting in front of the video console day after day, night after night, staying up till four o'clock in the morning playing video games, that's a big no, no for me. <laughs> yeah. And luckily I'm not a, a, a gamer, right? So another must not example is maybe your partner, maybe they're in a position where they don't work out all the time. And for me, well, that's one of my must nots. Like you must not violate not working out. I know it sounds kind of counterproductive, but like I love giving her time, well not giving her time, but ha with the kids, like holding my youngest and you know, and are playing with our oldest and so she's giving her time to go work out in, on the elliptical or something like that. She uh, allows me, because she's got to watch the kids, right? <laughs> she allows me to go to the gym in the morning so that I can get my workout. We have a must not that you must not be out of shape, right? Like we really want to work on that. Mm -hmm. Also doing drugs, like for our relationship. That's yeah. something that must not happen. Yeah. She she doesn't do them. I don't do them. So we don't want that in our relationship. So is there any others for you? 
any other examples you can give? Those are pretty much, I mean, you've got to know, like for you, what is just a complete non-negotiable and let your partner know. And you should get curious about what your partner's non-negotiables are. Uh, I'll say this in the times we're in today, and I'm certainly a violator <laughs> of this at times, right? And so being on Facebook, on your phone, right? Just head in the phone all day, all evening. She has talks with me sometimes yeah. because I'm, you know, I'm checking stocks, I'm checking our YouTube, <laughs> I'm checking Facebook to see if people have questions or whatnot, right? Like I, you know, clients texting, so yeah. I can catch myself in the phone, but getting loss, uh, getting loss of time, getting, yeah. well, how would Not I say present. that? Not present, <laughs> like losing time. There you go, right? Like I would lose time because I'm in my phone working on all these things and all she sees is this. And so that's a must not for her. And so we have a rule that, you know, after we're done our calls or at a certain time in the evening, we put our phone away for an hour and we just spend quality time together. So the third way to increase your, um, your, the quality of your relationship is don't violate your partner's must nots. And for you, you might need to ask your partner, you might need to go and talk to them about it. But if you've been together for a little bit, you kind of have an idea because yeah. guess what? you've probably got into it a couple times <laughs> over the same stupid shit, right? So learn from that, shift from that. And maybe yeah. you need to give it an empowering meaning. And so she's good at that. So anyway, <laughs> that's number three. And the fourth one is you have to constantly reinforce your partner's importance to you, right? And the way I like to do that is through the five love languages. If you haven't read that book or took that assessment, I highly encourage you to do, we're gonna do a video on that. So if you don't know what the five love languages on, hold, are, hold tight, we'll make it. <laughs> but you wanna be able to speak your partner's love language. Yeah. Let them know that they're important to you. I post on Facebook all the time about her. I'll write a, <laughs> I'll write a, a, a poem to her if we're away when we have, when we take our relationship breaks, which yeah. we just made a video on. So check that video out. Yeah. Is it important to do a break within the relationship? So you want to make them feel important in certain, in many different ways, not just in the same way over and over and over. It's boring. It's predictable. So one thing I do though, that isn't really um, expressed outwardly, but it's more something I do internal for myself is Every night, I think about all the things I love about him, things I appreciate about him, right? So it's like in my own mind, I'm filling up like that love tank for him and my meaning and my focus is about what I what I love. And so that makes me feel good and it makes me want him even more. So, so that's a really good internal strategy, yeah. right? As I gave you guys some external strategies, yeah. but how does your partner like to feel important, right? Like maybe they don't like the blast on social media, but yeah. maybe they like the dishes in the uh, sink, yeah. you know, wash, <laughs> Put away right? Like, or come home to a clean house, yeah. right? Like I love coming home to a clean house. Like our house <laughs> with two kids is it's uh, everything has its place. Now, yeah, our kids, you know, mess it up a little bit, but every night we clean it up and throughout the day we're cleaning up. That that speaks yeah. like she she's she knows that and she does that for me because it brings a great energy to the house yeah. and to me. And so like that's how I know she's making me feel important and special and significant. Yeah. And you could also ask your partner, what makes you feel loved? What makes you feel important? What makes you feel special? Mm -hmm. And let them tell you and that way you're not guessing. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, guys, so we just gave you four easy steps that you could take to give <laughs> your relationship or increase the quality of your relationship at the next level. Because let's be honest, no one wants a stale relationship. We all want passion. We want excitement. We want that fulfilling feeling with our partner, right? Like you didn't come into this relationship just to kind of, you know, bicker at each other. You came to this relationship because you love each other. Or you want to be with each other. All right, so implement these four steps. And what we'd love to do is we'd love to hear, what have you done? How have you taken these four steps and implement, implemented them into your relationship? And how's the quality of it improved? So comment below, we'd love to hear that. If you guys found video, value in this video, in backwards, right? If you found value in this video, Go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're coming out with three videos in the areas of relationship, like here, uh, business and finances, and then also in personal development. So click that subscribe button, share this video, and if you guys like it, give us a thumbs up. So with that, I'm Joe Moffitt. I'm Christina Moffitt. AKA Team Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one, guys. Bye. See ya.